Artificial intelligence, the wave of the future. Well, it has applications so scary that includes things like, you know, software that can hold philosophical conversations with you, or even go so far as to read your mind. The thing is, AI is no longer science fiction. Both the examples I just quoted to you are actually available for access online. And because this video is monetized, I'm not able to show you either of those, but you can head down to the video description, you can check out the first two links. And in fact, I really recommend you check out Akinator. The whole idea is it is a 20 questions kind of game. You have something in mind, it basically asks you a series of questions, and then it basically guesses what you're thinking of. And it is quite scary in terms of how accurate it gets, but you'll probably be very happy to know that none of this is witchcraft. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at one of the key components of artificial intelligence called machine learning. And we're going to try and realize together that it is not witchcraft at all. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, as mentioned, artificial intelligence is quite a broad subject and all we're going to look at today is just one field of it and that would be machine learning. Now, before we go into you know great depths of what machine learning actually is, I think it's important to be able to compare it with traditional programming to you know just tell the difference between the two. There are two ways to solve computational problems in general. Traditionally, the method we use to solve it is by actually writing an algorithm. When you do things this way, the operation is more or less rigid. You have an input, the input is processed in a consistent and well-defined manner, and then you get an output. So a known fixed set of input will always produce the same set of output, and in fact, this is the law that governs basically the vast majority of the programs you're using. You know, this includes productivity applications like spreadsheets or document processors, all the way to programs like games. They're all written in the same manner. A fixed set of input gives you a fixed set of output. Machine learning differs in the sense that the process part of the equation is actually modeled or shaped by the input. And that is where the learning part happens. The program itself is actually shaped by the input. Now, this still sounds a lot like witchcraft, so let's delve deeper and try to understand it better. Now, consider this analogy. You may have done this in school before, but maybe you've done a set of experiments. They have given you a set of data. So what you do is you take out a piece of graph paper and you plot these points on that graph paper. Naturally, the next thing you want to do is to either interpolate between the results, extrapolate them, or just find you know, the relation between these two variables. What you then do is you draw a line of best fit through all the points. In fact, with this line, what you've generated is an expectation of you know, what kind of y values you will get given a particular x value. And in fact, what you've done is you've generated a function you know, it's kind of like a program because it takes an input and produces an output. And you've actually defined this function entirely based on a set of data. At its simplest, this is what machine learning does. And the proper name for this is called regression. Of course, many other techniques exist, but I think this is a good example to show you how you can actually generate a program just based on a set of input data. So the answer is machine learning isn't witchcraft. It is simply a statistical method. And just to prove it's not witchcraft, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you an example running on my very own computer. I'm gonna teach my computer to recognize the difference between a circle and a square that is hand-drawn. Now for the sake of simplicity, we are going to very much limit the scope of this experiment. The input data are these 100 by 100 pixel images that are entirely black and white. These pictures consist of a white background as well as a shape in black. So what you're seeing here are the 16 training examples we're going to be using. Now I can't just take all these pictures, 
show them to a machine learning algorithm and say, here, do your stuff. That would be witchcraft. Instead, what we need to do is we need to extract what are known as feature vectors. These are the things that will be fit into the statistical model and that is basically what the algorithm will use to learn about the input data. To achieve this, I've written a little utility in Python and the whole idea is we want to look out for two things. First, we want to look at all the horizontal lines in an image that are not completely empty and what we want to do is we want to see how many pixels are being colored black. The idea is this, for a circle, you'll expect this number to start off low, increase slowly to a maximum, and then decrease again. That is of course because of the shape of the circle. For a square, you'd expect this value to start off large and stay at a more or less constant number throughout the entire duration, and then jump back to zero almost immediately. So all we'll do is we'll find the average length, the average width of black pixels, and we'll try to see how much the other lines differ from this average. Theoretically, if we have a circle, the variance will be large, whereas if we have a square, the variance will be very little. This will be our first of two feature vectors. Our second one compares the biggest difference between two consecutive lines. Theoretically, this value will be small for a circle and large for a square. So what we have are two feature vectors that are generated for every image. Now that we have that ready, we can feed that into a machine learning algorithm and hopefully it sees the pattern that we expected to see. What I'm using here is a free open source program called Orange. It basically gives you a node-based interface in which you can very nicely push data around and into machine learning algorithms. So here's a plan. We take the 16 samples we have run it through my algorithm to generate the feature vectors, and then feed them into orange. We run the data through a test learner's node, and I have just one algorithm hooked up to it right now. What we're doing here is called cross-validation. The idea is this. I have 16 pieces of data right now that are known. In other words, I have included both the values as well as you know its classification. What cross-validation does is it uses some of the data to train the algorithm and the remaining ones to test it to see if the training was successful. It does this a certain number of times. Currently, I have it set to five-fold cross-validation. So it does this five times with five different partitions. When this is done, we can actually look at the results in terms of a confusion matrix. What this matrix does is it shows you how many of the instances were correctly classified and how many were wrongly classified. In this case, we have a perfect score. What we're going to do now is we're going to add a few more algorithms. So all these are different machine learning techniques that we're just going to pit against each other using the same set of input data and we'll see how they all fit. And maybe because my feature vectors were really effective, or my input data is really simple, most of the algorithms actually don't have much trouble. In the worst case, they misclassify one piece of the input, and that is considered, you know, pretty good performance. There are different ways to test, you know, how well a classification has went. We've already seen cross-validation. What we can also do is we can bring in a new set of data. In fact, what I have here are eight more samples that are different from the training data. So what I can do is I can introduce that, you know, to the entire setup and basically test them on the new set of data. As you can see, the algorithms fared pretty well. With the exception of the majority algorithm, most of the others are able to identify the new items without any problems. And there you have it. Now, out of interest, you know, just to wrap up this video on a high note, what we're going to do is we're going to try some other different sets of data. I've purposely made these more challenging so that there's a higher likelihood of things messing up. For example, this set of data has all the shapes of center or drawn in a very sloppy manner. While most algorithms did pretty well, there seems to be confusion with one particular square. In fact, if we were to look at its feature vectors, you realize that they look a lot like that of a circle. Obviously, the algorithm's going to get confused. 
Let's try again with a little noise. What I've done is I've sprinkled random black and white pixels throughout the image. And not surprisingly at all, all the algorithms have actually failed. In this case, it is not the fault of the algorithms at all. Instead, you realize that my feature factors were completely confused thanks to the noise. So in this particular case, the issue lies with my feature vector generation. And there you have it, that is machine learning in a nutshell. We've tried to understand the concept behind how machine learning works. We've then gone on to look at an extended example of me putting machine learning through its paces. We've seen that given favorable conditions, machine learning can do really well at classifying samples. And probably most importantly of all, we've learned that it is not witchcraft. It's just math. That wraps it up for this Random Wednesday episode on machine learning. I hope you've gained some insights and hopefully, you know, it doesn't sound like witchcraft anymore. That's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.